Activity 3. If I only had a brain. Open your LEGO EV3 software. The first screen that you will see is the lobby. This will always be your beginning screen when starting up. On the left side you will see tiles that will give you lots of great information about things you can do with your set. We will be focusing our attention on the robot educator, but be sure to take some time and explore the other tiles. Let's begin by introducing the software, which will give you a little bit of an idea how to program your EV3. To make a new program, look at the top of the screen and find the plus sign. This will let you add a project. LEGO Mindstorms lets you create a project to hold all of your programs. Think of it as a way to organize your work. Each project can hold several programs. At school, you may have a folder for each of your individual classes. That's like the project. However, inside of that folder, you may have a lot of different assignments. Those are like your programs. The first block is the start block, which shows up whenever you start a new program. In the upper right corner, you will notice several icons. If you hover over these icons, you can find out what these buttons can do. No guessing required. Under those buttons, you will also see an area called the content editor. We won't need that right now, so you can use the book icon in the upper right corner to hide it. So let's get programming. The bottom sections are called the palettes. We have an action palette and a flow control palette. There are also palettes for sensors, data operations, advanced, and my blocks. We will cover some of these palettes, but not all of them. Be sure to investigate the lobby to find out about pallets we don't cover here. To test our brick, we are going to make a very simple program. Let's just have our brick play a simple sound. In order to do this, we have to write a program to tell our brick what to do. In the action palette, we can grab the sound block and drag it to the program work area. You can drop it anywhere, but because we want this to connect to the start block, we have to drag it close enough to highlight the connection. If you drag it away from the start block, you will see that it grays out. If you ever see blocks that are gray like this, then they are not properly connected into your program. You can also use the connectors at the end of each programming block to connect blocks together. Just drag the connector and plug it into another block and it should light up, which shows the connection. Now you can drag a block around the work area, but still maintain the connection. At the bottom of each block, you will see some things that you can modify. These will change how this block performs the action. The folder under the sound block can be clicked to do a few things. You can use this block to stop a sound, play a sound file, play a tone, or play a note. Let's just stick with playing a file. In order to tell the block which sound to play, we click on the open white space in the green bar at the top of the block. When you hover over it, it should say file name. By clicking on the white space, you will get a menu that lets you select a specific sound file to play. Choose the LEGO sound files folder and look into the animals. You can pick sounds like a dog or a T-Rex. I'm not sure if we want an animal sound, so let's choose another one. In the communication folder, let's use the fantastic sound. Fantastic. Once you choose the sound, you should see that the white space now has a label with the word fantastic in it. We can also change the volume in the sound by clicking on the bottom. We can even tell the brick how to play the sound. We can select Wait for Completion, which means that it won't move on in the program until the sound is done playing. We can even tell the brick to play the sound just once or in a loop. We've just written our first program. I know it's pretty simple, but this will give our intelligent brick a short set of instructions that we can use to test if it's working properly. Now you're going to plug your intelligent brick into your computer. Now, we have several options. We could change the name of the robot in the lower right, but for now, let's just get the program onto our brick. There are a few ways to do this. The first icon is the download icon. 
This copies the program to your robot and plays a sound when the copy is complete. You can also use the Download and Run icon. This will copy the program to the robot and then immediately runs the program. The last icon is the Run Selected button. This button lets you focus on just a part of your program. We will usually use the first icon and just download the program to our robot and run it from the brick. Press the right button to scroll to the right so that you select the icon that looks like two sheets of paper. Press the center button to select the project file and press the up or down buttons to highlight the program you want to run. To run the program, select it by pressing the middle button. Fantastic! The program works! Please read the rest of the activity and then move on to activity four.